Hello everyone and welcome back to another exciting chess game from the history of chess. And uh, I like to make an announcement. The oldest living chess grandmaster, Yuri Haverba, has died two days ago at the age of 100 years old. So he was the oldest ever chess grandmaster and he was active at the age of 100. He actually celebrated his 100th birthday for about three months ago and two days ago he passed away at the age of 100 and he was a very strong chess player he had plus score against some of the very strong chess players like Max Uwe and Tigran Petrosian also Rashid Nejmetdinov the fierce attacker has never managed to defeat Yuri Auerbach Auerbach defeated Nejmetdinov eight times Nejmetdinov defeated Auerbach zero times. So it is pretty evident that Yuri Auerbach was a very strong chess player, a very important valuable chess player. He was also a chess author and he stayed active until his final years. So he was 100 years of age and he was still playing chess competitively. Not like in the old days because his hearing and his eyesight has weakened because of age but besides that he was still sharp actually at the age of 100 and did you know that he was the last living participant of the famous Zurich chess, Zurich chess tournament from 1953 and this is the picture from the Zurich chess tournament uh, this is the picture of the Soviet team in the Zurich chess tournament on the far left that's Tigran Petrosian the one who is standing next to Petrosian, that's Alexander Kotov, the author of the Think Like a Grandmaster, next to him with a black jacket, that's no other than Paul Keres himself, and next to Paul Keres, that's Yuri Auerba, and on the far right, that's Efim Geller. So, once again, Yuri Auerba was the last living participant of the Zuri chess tournament from 1953 and finally two days ago he died and this is also one of his recent pictures when he was 95 years old and he was still competing at the professional level and also this is his picture when he was playing against the youngest ever active chess player uh, I believe his opponent was something like five years old or something <laughs> and Averba here is like 95 years old I'm not 100% sure about their ages but Averba obviously is pretty old and his opponent is pretty young so okay uh, I think we should check out one of his chess games when he was competing at the highest level so this is from 1947 a chess game from Moscow and his opponent is Vladimir, Z uh, Vladimir Zek, a strong chess player and also important chess trainer. He was the trainer of both Viktor Korchnoi and Boris Spassky. So Averba has the white pieces and he starts the game with e4, e5, knight to f3, knight to c6 and we have the Spanish game. Asking a question, bishop goes back, knight to f6, Averba castled, knight takes on e4, d4 b5 bishop back d5 and capturing the pawn bishop to e6 developing c3 bishop to e7 bishop to e3 and zack castled knight from b to d2 exchanging the knights knight to a5 bishop goes back knight to c4 and this looks dangerous isn't it the knight is looking very dangerous forking the queen and the bishop so in this position Auerbach played queen to d3 defending the queen but more importantly actually he's threatening checkmate so there is no time for capturing the bishop so defending like this actually i don't see any reasonable defense in this position besides capturing uh, besides pushing the pawn but this move actually weakened the dark squares so Auerbach played the obvious move bishop to h6 attacking the rook but in between move, black has a very good move, knight takes on b2, after defending the queen, only then defending the rook, which is completely fine, 
Actually, Black is playing the computer moves. Computer also likes the moves of Black. And we have Knight to d4, Queen to d7, f4, and Auerbach is attacking from the king's side. And obviously, he is planning to push to f pawn. But in this position, Vladimir Zak played a bad move. He played Knight to c4. Why this move was a bad move? It looks like an innocent move, a harmless move for black, attacking the queen and also activating the knight. But this move is actually a losing move. What was the better move? Well, c4 kicking the knight somewhere else is very important in this position and then developing the knight, knight to c4. Placing the knight on c4 was very important. But in this position, knight to c4 is little bit premature because this gives white a very valuable tempo. Queen to g3 by Yuri Averba. And now c5 but this is little bit late because Averba played. What would you do in this position? Can you guess the next move of white? If I give you a couple of seconds, what would you do? Well, he simply pushed the pawn. Okay, this is the correct move of course. That was his idea. And the G pawn is pinned, so he is attacking the bishop. And we have C takes on D4. And maybe capturing the bishop is expected. But Yuri Averba didn't capture the bishop, he captured the pawn. G takes. F takes on G6. And his threat is pretty obvious. Capturing the pawn check, double check, and then checkmating the king, landing on g7. So what else? Black has to capture the pawn, and now what would you do? Can you guess the next move of Yuri Averba? Let me give you a few seconds once again. Well, in this position, Averba sacrificed the bishop. Bishop takes on g6, and we have king to h8, not capturing the bishop, because if capturing the bishop, basically this is getting checkmated. Queen to g7, checkmate. There is no defense. So, bishop takes on g6, king to h8, and now what would you do? <laughs> I ask this question a lot, but actually, not every move is winning for white. So, in this position, this is not what happened in the game, but if something like bishop to c2, which is a tempting move, threatening checkmate, rook to g8, and white is lost, black is winning, engine gives black minus 5 points or something, so black is winning, and white is losing. Because you can't also bring the queen uh, to the h-file, because these bishops are like monsters. And basically white is losing, so in this position, after this move, we have king to h8 and not retreating the bishop, not going back. Not bishop to c2 for checkmating the king. Did you see the move? Okay, so Auerbach played bishop to g7. This is check. A very beautiful move. And we have accepting the sacrifice, but if not accepting the sacrifice, if king to g8, then bishop takes on f7, this is check. And if king to h7, basically this is getting checkmated. And if bishop takes on f7, then check. And black is getting checkmated, there is no sensible defense. As you can see in this example. So bishop to g7 check. King takes bishop, what else? And Averba captured the pawn, check. King to h8. The only move if going down, queen to g6, checkmate, and now queen up and threatening checkmate, queen to h6, checkmate. We have bishop to f8, a funny and a desperate move. If bishop takes on f7, then rook takes on f7, and checkmate is coming, and black basically can't defend. Queen to h7, checkmate. So queen to g6, we have Bishop to f8 defending on h6, but this time leaving on g8. Queen to g8, 
checkmate. Blocking to repeat the bishop and getting checkmated. What a game by Yuri Overba. A very nice, simple and a beautiful attacking chess game by Yuri Overba. And once again, he was the oldest living chess grandmaster ever. And two days ago, he passed away at the age of 100. He said he starts swimming after the age of 83 for every day. For being active, uh, he lived a long life. Because he liked to do sports and he liked to be active, physically active. That's very important if you want to keep healthy. And I'm sure he never smoked and he lived a healthy life. And finally he died at the age of 100 and he was the oldest living chess grandmaster ever at the age of 100. Interesting, isn't it? So, and by this, the oldest living member of the famous and one of the strongest chess tournaments of the Zuri chess tournament from 1953 has passed away. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time with more beautiful chess games like this one. Actually, Averba has some other chess games like this, so maybe I should also show those games as well. This is not his only notable chess game for sure. He has many more chess games like this. Uh, so thank you very much for watching. Don't forget that, by the way. Nezmetinov has never defeated Averba. Ever. So he was rock solid. A rock solid chess player. Thank you very much for watching again. Take care and bye bye.